Hello and welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is a four-part series in which we talk to Tintin about how she went about creating a LARP and how you can do exactly the same thing. So sit back and enjoy. And all of the details can be found over at LARPbook.com. Now then, I am here today with Tintin. Hello, Tintin. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. Good, good, good. Now, Tintin's going to be sort of uh, helping us out today in helping you um, understand what it takes to kind of write a LARP and why Tintin decided um, she was going to do this. Uh, Now, Tintin is a computer game developer. She's been LARPing for uh, about two and a half years now, and I actually sort of... uh, uh, played uh, a LARPing game with her uh, on, at Fairweather Manor. It was in Poland. Any of you that remember that series that we did uh, know that it was an awful lot of fun and an awful lot of hard work as well. So uh, fair play. It was a, a, an interesting experience. And and I must be honest, I really loved um, Tintin's character quite a lot. Um, so with that, uh, let, let's start off then. So, so Tintin, um, why on earth... You know, looking at <laughs> and me knowing and looking at all of the hard work uh, that goes into creating a LARP, did you want to basically start to 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 do this and write about it? So um, g- give us your reasons why. Well, first of all, I wanted to create a bigger LARP because there weren't any LARPs of the kind I like in Sweden. I'm a big fan of historical LARPing and Sweden tends to veer towards fantasy. So because of that, I figured maybe I should make my own. And well, okay, yeah. the problem was there were sort of no resources around to help me do it. So I figured the best way I could do it is possibly start to uh, organize my own or try to get some organizing experience somehow. And I found two friends who were interested in organizing one with me. So I ended up looking up smaller LARPs because, well, maybe we could have a small LARP, uh, a black box one, small package, because yeah. this is a Romanesque LARP. And I found out that there was this one little game that would fit us quite, just perfectly. And then I went to a very big historical game and had a lot of fun. And one of the friends who were going to organize things with me found that she was sort of interested in doing a historical game rather than a black box one. So I ended up finding a location that fit our needs, historical wise, and sat myself down to write it. Um, So when you sort of started out then doing this, um, what ideas did you actually base yours on? Well, the first thing I had to do was nail down the vision, which is the, well, the prime idea that you want your players to experience. So I started out with a spin-off to Fairweather, actually, partially because I'd heard that, uh, well, that permission had been given for a Christmas LARP, and partially because I knew that this was going to be a very small private affair, and partially because one of my friends really wanted to come to a reunion LARP if there was one as a character that we had already workshopped. So I ended up writing a small LARP about several characters at a cafe waiting for a young man named George who is returning home from the front. And they all have ties to George in some way or other, and they all have ties to each other in some way. And they all know things about George that the others don't. And every single one of them had the reason, you know why George left. <laughs> right. Okay, and, and, and sort of going going on from there then, um, that sort of in, inspired you for, for that point then to, to create this LARP and to get all the players together and to generate the characters and what have you, yeah? Yeah, the vision for it was basically... I want a LARP where people are driven to do harsh decisions but, and, feel, and made to feel powerless by, circ- by the circumstances, which in this case were the historical circumstances. Stay tuned for the next episode.